there's an idea that maybe the psychedelics, by doing what I was talking about, open up the brain to having new synapse formation in a critical period. Now, this is animal work, but the idea is that animals normally go through a cycle. Now, those of you who are um, 49 rodent post gestational age old in the room are still up there having social context and learning. And those of us who are more like 91 post uh, age, I don't know what that is in human years, look how the curve goes down and doesn't really uh, help you at all. And so one of the problems is that maybe you can't learn a language uh, without an accent anymore, right? That's a certain period of time in your life. And uh, if you're past that, you know, if you learn a language, it's gonna have an accent. That's an example of, of some window ch closing. So maybe what happens is that these drugs open the window. So look at what MDMA does. It goes from us old 91 day old rats to like somebody who's as good as a, a 35 year old, day old rat. And so does cocaine, oh, it doesn't do that, oh, huh. I better take ecstasy. Or, guess what? This is the answer to one of the pretest questions. It seems that MDMA, MDMA, it's like giving you a hug. Oh, oh I'll give you one too. So what's that mean? If you give somebody a hug, their oxytocin goes up? How about that? It's a psychotomimetic hug, or an MDMA hug. So people think maybe that the affinity you feel and the closeness and the warm, fuzzy feelings you get from MDMA are mediated by oxytocin. And here are all these other drugs, psilocybin, LSD, and ketamine, all, but not cocaine, increasing your ability to have these behaviors which get kind of programmed out of you when you're old enough to drive, I guess, or at least come to uh, NEI. So uh, there, on the middle door there is uh, LSD on the way out. Uh, there's the psilocybin. Actually, I wanted you to take it on the way in so you'd remember it, but maybe you'll consolidate it after you leave here. So what does the psychedelic assisted therapy fit into this? There's an idea that you have to have these hallucinations. You have to do it in a safe place and you have to be guided while that experience is, is there. And I hope this is not right, because it's gonna be very complicated. It's also subjected to idiots doing the psychotherapy or people who are bad doing psychotherapy. Pop quiz, who are the first pe persons who use psilocybin before even the Beverly Hills psychiatrists? The CIA. And what did they use it for? They tried to do brainwashing with it and they tried to coerce confessions out of people. Uh, I understand now the Republicans are trying to turn uh, the Socialist Democrats into capitalists with the same thing at the current time. <laughs> I don't know if it's working or not. No, I'm teasing, but they tried to take communists and turn them into capitalists by, by doing psychotherapy. So you can do, um, in fact, I, if you wanna have fun with this, you should read a book of a colleague of mine at UCSD, Joel Dimsberg, or Dimsdale, Joel Dimsdale wrote a book called Dark persuasion. And so the issue here is how much is this going to cost? How long you have to keep somebody there? Can they drive home or they have to have somebody else drive them home? You know, and then of course, what if you have somebody who's not a nice person or in just an, a poorly trained person doing this? But I do like this idea because opening critical periods is one way to put it, like in PTSD. But here, let me put it this way. When you have a synaptogenesis at the time of a traumatic event, let's say, that sucker gets embedded into your amygdala and is very, very, very difficult to reverse for whatever reasons. That's a learning, I mean, I can forget my, uh, you know, s certain things like, you know, my, my American Express card number pretty easily, but my, maybe my social security number I don't forget. So there, there are certain things that are easy to forget. There's some things that are hard to forget. And so the issue is consolidation. Do you ever hear that term? Consolidation is the term for filing your memory when you first get it. So the memorable experience that you're having now and consolidation of any new memories that you're having 
is the first storage of a new memory. Then what happens is that your brain will then want to review the file. So it takes it out of memory and puts it into consciousness, and it has a mechanism to do that to say, Stall was full of crap, I'm gonna eliminate this thing, I'm gonna take it out of memory and erase it, or it was brilliant and it connects to 17 other things, so I'm gonna connect other memories to this memory so that it enriches this memory, and then, then it's called reconsolidated, it's refiled. And at least in animal models, the refiling of the memory is labile. It's easy to disrupt. You can disrupt it with a variety of drugs or with foot shock stress or other things that, so you don't file it. And guess what? You've just forgotten it. So ladies and gentlemen, the one, I do, I, whether or not I believe that you have to hallucinate, I do think it's interesting to think of the possibility of disrupting reconsolidation. That's a fancy way of saying, and this is my hope, you can forget your PTSD. You can forget your addiction. Your addiction is just a memory in an addicted circuit. In principle, why couldn't you? If you can have synaptogenesis by directing the right circuit at the right time with the right symptom, and maybe you do need some uh, assistance with uh, psychotherapy at the time. I don't know, I'm open-minded to it. I just don't think uh, you, you have to have it. I, I can give you some anecdotal experiences. I've had uh, patients come to me and say, Dr. Stahl, I went to, you know, uh, the Amazon and had ayahuasca. By the way, ayahuasca is made in two pots. I actually went there myself. I didn't have it, but I did go. And so the medicine man, it was a medicine woman actually, they're, they're evidently, uh, you know, equal genders there. So this medicine woman comes out with a hat on and so forth, and she's brewing. On pot one is a certain set of roots, and you know what's in that? DMT. Pop quiz, what's in pop two? Pot two, different roots. And the amount of roots you put in, the amount of water, how long you boil them, how hot it is, determine how much of the stuff comes out of the roots and into the soup. What's in the second pot? Harmine, harmaline alkaloids that are MAO inhibitors. Why? Because if you eat DMT, nothing happens because it goes into your stomach and gets destroyed by MAO. But if you have ayahuasca, it makes it work. So this person said, oh, it was the most incredible experience. You know, you know I saw my dog that died and you know, my, my three generations ago grandfather I never met but heard about and, and oh. Then I said, why are you in my office for treatment resistant depression then? So I don't dispute that there can be amazing experiences. I'm not sure it connects with the dot that that, in particularly that case, it didn't do that. So <coughs> do those experiences make you well? Are they related to the price of bread? I'm trying to get you to forget your PTSD. I'm trying to get you to, why do you do that? Even if MDMA works, does it, why does it work? How does it work? How can we make it work better? So those are the kind of open questions. I think it's a brave new world and all sorts of cool stuff is happening. But, but I do tell you that there's a little thing about pharmacokinetics that you've just learned. Don't take DMT on an empty stomach. Now, there, there may be ways that you've heard. So this is a big disappointment for those of you. There's actually um, a little box full of toads out there that any of you who want to pick up a toad and lick it, there is certain DMT in the, in the, in the uh, skin of toads, but it won't work unless you take your ayahuasca or you're on phenolzine or something, or this will gross you out, one of the worst things I'm gonna say before I end my talk, take it rectally. A rectal toad will actually get absorbed because the rectal mucosa is very much like an IV. And uh, anyway, enough, TMI, too much information. But anyway, you need the right drug with the absorption that doesn't have 5-HT2B uh, actions that are gonna hurt your heart, that are gonna be able to take repetitively that can lead to this uh, outcome. And, and it's a lot, I, I don't have any answers in this talk, I just got questions.